Live for Christ Multimedia, a generation standing up for Jesus Christ. Hello guys, this is God Seven Eric Obin. I will encourage you to tune into Alpha C Radio. We have a show called Word and Spirit at 3 p.m. every Wednesday. Tune in and you'll be a blessing. This is Live for Christ Radio. We are the vessels in the expansion of God's kingdom. Oh, this is L for C Radio. Oh, for there is none like you, go. Hita ye setele bakaya baba baba baka baba baba. Hita ye setele beke bebe 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 bakaya satala baka baba. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Oh yes, Lord, what a blessed day! We well, thank you, oh God. Kataya satala baka baba baba. Wherever you are, just lift up your voice and begin to worship God. Begin to adore Him. Begin to bless his holy name, O God, for there is none like you, O God. Kataye setele bekaya baba bala kataya satala baka baba baba. Oh yes, Lord, I am that I am is your name, O God. Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi. Why don't you worship God with me this afternoon, wherever you are? Lift up your voice and begin to worship Him, Lord. Kataya setele bekaya baka baba 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 baba. Oh, God has been good to us wherever you are. God has kept us alive in the name of Jesus. The psalmist said something. He said, I went to sleep and I am awake because the Lord sustained me. Beloved, it's not automatic that when you go to sleep, you should wake up. I always say this and I repeat it again. That any time that you have breath, any time that there's blood running through your system that you should know that it is the glory of God because even as you are here listening to me this afternoon it is likely that somebody's death certificate has been signed somebody has been sent to the mortuary somebody is saying to the doctor that I need to breathe my last breath on this earth and I'll say bye bye but if God has been good to you and God has been good to me that is just by grace in the name of Jesus the Bible said that for it is not by mind, it's not by power, it is just by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus, my God. Today is the 26th of December. We have just five days and we'll bring, oh, yesterday, 2018 to an end. Beloved, God has been good to you. God has been good to me. Just think about the number of days in the month of January. Think about the number of days in the month of February. Think about the number of days in the month of March, April, May, June, July, even up to the month of December, today being 26. What can you give in exchange of this love? What can you give in exchange of this blessings? Why don't you lift up your voice and begin to thank Him wherever you are? We are in the month of December, oh God, and we are in the season of Christmas. <laughs> I am so glad and I'm so happy. Because this season of Christmas set us the genesis of the redemptive plan of our God Jesus Christ. Our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, when God came in the form of a flesh to come and redeem man and bring man unto himself. If we read the book of First Timothy chapter 3 verse 16, it says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God must manifest. God was manifested in the flesh.
the attention of Philip and his asked Jesus Christ a question in the verse 8. Said that Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. And Jesus said unto him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. And how can you say, Show us the Father? Because Jesus Christ was with them. And yet Jesus Christ was talking about the Father. And they became confused, confused and said, Show us the Father. May we know the Father. And Jesus Christ replied and said, You have been with me for this while, and still you don't know the Father. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ replied to Philip and said, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? In other words, what Jesus Christ was saying that if you have seen me, Jesus Christ, then you have seen the Father. Glory be to God. And if you read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19, Bible said that, and God was in Christ reconciling us to himself. Which means that in the month of December, the season of Christmas, it this is the time, is it is the Christ genesis ready. of we our redemptive plan, which God purposed kingdom. right from Genesis, right from the beginning of the world. Bible said that he taught about us. He dreamt about us. He taught about us. And he said that, no, I have to come. And it was part of his plan. If you read the book of Ephesians chapter 1, reading from the verse 3. Say that blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, According to the good pleasure of his will. Listen. Bible said that God already taught about us before the foundation of the world. Before God taught about creating this world, he taught about you and I. And he said that having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself. According to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound towards us in wisdom and prudence. My goodness. This is so sweet. So this is what I want you to understand this afternoon. That God loves you. Even if you were the only person on this earth, trust me, God will still have sent his son. The Bible said that he was in his son Jesus Christ, reconciling as to himself what can you think about this it's all about love hallelujah you read the, the second chapter of the Ephesians read it from the verse 4 it said that but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us because of his great love which he loved us God loves you and I that is why he sent for his son to come and die for you and I so I want you to understand that Christmas is a season that anytime I think about the season of Christmas my heart is filled with joy this because it makes me to sit down radio. and think about the love of God and think about the message of God this is just an introduction I just want you to understand that God loves you for the past two weeks we've been talking about preparing ourselves into 2019 and that is the message for today hallelujah we are still equipping ourselves. We are still preparing ourselves into 2019. And I want you to understand that you are listening to God's servant, a recording live on L4C Radio. You can also hear me on Facebook, on YouTube as well. Let's go into the word of God today. Hallelujah. Today, I want us to open our Bibles and go into the book of Daniel. The Daniel, the chapter 11. Reading from the verse 32. But let me start from the verse 29. To kind of lay foundation. We are preparing ourselves into 2019. God is preparing you and I. 2019 is just at the corner. You see, I want you to understand that 2019 is a year of glory. 2019, God will make a way. He's a way maker God. You see, God has not forsaken you. God loves you. 
let me read a scripture to you in Isaiah chapter 43 reading from the verse 4 since thou was precious in my sight thou hast been honorable and I have loved thee therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life this is God speaking to the children of Israel he said that because you are precious in my sight and you are honorable I have loved thee you see God loves you that is why from January up to December you are still alive if God doesn't love you by now you wouldn't have existed because God this loves you, he said that Christ because Radio, I love you, and not because I only love you, but because you are precious in my sight, he said that I will therefore give men unto you and people for their life. Hallelujah. Which means that in 2019, God will bring people in your way. you through your friends it will be a blessing to you through your neighbors so Isaiah chapter 43 verse 4 says that since thou was precious in my sight thou has been honorable and I have loved thee therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life glory be to God hallelujah and let me read another scripture to you in Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6 it says that be strong and of good courage fear not nor be afraid of them for the Lord thy God, it is that goeth, it is he that goeth with thee, and he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Glory be to God. Listen, this is a prophecy I am prophesying unto you in 2019. He said that do not be afraid. Maybe you are kind of afraid. Maybe because 2018 did not go well with you. Live because things Christ did not go the way you expected it to be. No Therefore, you are kind of around. discouraged. You are asking yourself, what am I going to do in 2019? You keep asking yourself, why is it? Why am I even living? It is better for me to go and drink medicine and kill myself. But I came to encourage you this afternoon. He said that for 2019, God is saying that he will go before you. He will not fail you. He said he will not fail you or he will not forsake you. Hallelujah. These are just words of encouragement from the Lord Jesus Christ to you this afternoon. And let us go back into our main scripture. Daniel chapter 11 verses 29 but my main test is on the verse 32 but I want to start from the verse 29 and kind of lay foundation to what we are about to talk this afternoon hallelujah so that at the appointed time he shall return and go towards the this south is L for C but it Radio. shall not be like the former or the latter for ships from Cyrus shall come against him therefore he shall be grieved not to return in range against the holy covenant and do damage so he shall return and show regard for those who forsake thy holy covenant my goodness look at the verse 31 and forces shall be mastered by him and they shall defile the sanctuary fortress then they shall take away the daily sacrifice and place there the abomination of dissolution the verse 32 those who do wickedly against the covenant he shall corrupt with flattery but the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploit. My goodness. I'm reading the yes, New King James Version of Christ the scripture. Radio, that are, are but the, the people who know their the God, they shall be strong and shall carry out great exploit. That is what I want to talk about tonight. Hallelujah. Now the foundation of the scripture talks about a prophecy which was given to Daniel. Hallelujah. That it was warning the children of Israel against the persecution which they were about to go through in the hands of Antiochus Epinaphus, who was involved in other activities. Hallelujah. This man was seven gods, he was seven other gods other than the Jehovah God. And the prophet Daniel was speaking to the children of Israel, the Jews, that I'm telling you this ahead of time, that there's going to be a time. That you have to go through the persecution. There's going to be a time that you are going to go through some kind of storms in the hands of this ruler. Hallelujah. This kind of empire. And it said, But they, my goodness, said, But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out this great exploits. What I'm telling you this afternoon is that 2019 is just at the corner. 
but they that know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploit. Hallelujah. Now let's do some exegesis on the scripture. On the B part of Daniel 11 32. Said that but they that know their God, but they that know their God shall be stronger and carry out great aspect. Hallelujah. What does this scripture tell us? So this scripture simply tells us that it's not everybody that will do great exploit. Because Daniel told them that you are a, a lot, but they, but they, but they, but they. The qualification is they, they that know their God. They shall be strong and they shall do great exploit. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at this scripture very well. Now, there is a difference between knowing God and knowing about God. There's a big difference. Because he said, for they that know their God shall be strong and carry out good exploit. You see, you can know about God by going to church. You can also know about God by listening to preaching tape. And you can also know about God by having someone go with you in the Bible. But it is not the same about knowing God. Listen, knowing about God is having a personal relationship with God. Having an intimacy with God. Having a spiritual understanding with God by knowing His words. So the Bible makes us understand in Daniel chapter 11, it said that by day, by day, by day, but they that know their God, my God, my God, they shall be stronger and they shall carry out great exploits. Now the strong concordance, meaning of the word know, is to recognize or understand completely. Therefore, we can say that by those who understand spiritually, who really recognize their God, shall be strong and shall do great exploits. Hallelujah. Now the question is, why would knowing God make you strong and also cause you to do great exploit? Because Daniel was very specific and said that during the time of persecution, only those who know their God, my God, only those who know their God shall do great exploit. Hallelujah. Now, the reason is very simple. Because having a spiritual understanding and knowing about God will build you up in the faith. My God, that is why I said that it will make you strong. To make you strong means that it will build you up in the faith. 2019 is right at the corner. You see, I can tell you for sure that 2019 will not be smooth. I can tell you for sure. I'm not here to kind of deceive you and tell you that everything will be successful in 2019. Why? Because we are ambassadors on this earth. Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2 that the world is governed by Satan and his principalities. Hallelujah. It is governed by the devil and the devil has agent. He has principalities. There are powers governing and ruling this world. So the Bible makes us understand that you and I are just ambassadors. We are just on this earth temporarily. And there's going to be a time that we will join Jesus Christ in heaven. Hallelujah. Therefore, once you are living on this earth, there's going to be storms. There's going to be trouble. There's going to be persecution. But they that know their God. Hallelujah. If you know your God, you have a relationship with God. If you know your God, you have intimacy with him. If you know your God, you'll be very close to him. And it's knowing your God that will make you great as per Hallelujah. And it's time we have to move forward from just being born again. You have been born again for far too long. It's okay. You have been going to church for far too long. It's not about going to church. It's not about going to church every Sunday. I'm not saying it is not good. Going to church Sunday is very good. But we have to graduate from the point of just going to church. You have to graduate from the church from the point of just being born again and have to desire the point radio. of knowing God. Hallelujah. Number one gospel radio. Knowing God is a decision, it's a desire. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bible and look at what Paul said. Let's look at the account of Paul. Amen. In the book of Philippians, the book of Philippians, chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, and read from the verse 7. This is what Paul said after he gave his life to Christ. On the road of Damascus, when he had an encounter with Jesus Christ, he said something after that. There was a spiritual change about Paul. And Paul said that is not enough. Because Paul, 
has been in the system for far too long. But when he gave his life to Christ, there was a spiritual change. And Paul said that for me to really know God, I have to take a step. So let's read a, uh, Philippians chapter 3 from the verse 7. Said that, but what things were gained to me, this I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Look at the verse 9. And be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness, which is from God by faith. Look at the verse 10. That I may know him, my goodness. That I may know him. That's what Paul said. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings be confronted to his death. My goodness. Paul said that, that I may know him. Paul was a Hebrew from the Benjamin tribe. Hallelujah. Paul was a Pharisee. If you read the book of Galatians, he said that when it comes to following the law, Paul was very strict. He said that when it comes to following the law, the law, the law, the law, he said that nobody can compare himself to me. Therefore, he is far above his companions because he was following the law strictly. Even to the stand that when he hadn't given his life to Christ, he went to the king and he said that I need a letter from you that I may go and persecute the church. Hallelujah. And the Bible said that when he had an encounter, when he came into contact with Jesus Christ, he said that it is okay. I have depended on my strength for far too long. I thought following the Lord would have gotten me salvation therefore i count them as nothing but I, that i may know him and the power of his resurrection there is something about knowing him there is something about coming into contact with him hallelujah there is something about following him christ there is something about having intimacy having a relationship oh my goodness there is something about saying that i will follow you 2019 what will cause you to do great exploit is about having a relationship with him hallelujah that, that i may know him listen everybody has a measure of faith if you read the book of ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 therefore for by grace are we saved through faith by grace are we saved through faith which means that every believer you have a measure of faith if not you cannot be born again because you once the gospel is preached to you there is faith and there's the conviction of the holy spirit that gives you that access to being born again but when you become born again that is not all you have to move extra mile you have to go beyond just becoming born again and decided that i may know him my goodness jesus christ listen you have to move from that point and say that i may know him that i may know him that i may know him in 2019 the difference what will make you stand out among other christians is about being strong in your faith if you read the book of Romans chapter 14 Paul says something Paul classified a group of people as being weak in the faith that doesn't mean you don't have the faith you have the faith everybody has a faith every believer has a faith a measure of faith but Paul went further and said there are some people who are strong in the faith and there are some people who are weak therefore what will cause you to stand in the storm what will cause you to stand in the time of calamity? What will cause you to stand in 2019 is being strong in the faith. That is why. So, Prophet Daniel said that those, those, those who know their God, they shall be strong and as you do, then they will do great aspect. Hallelujah. Now, it is about being strong, being strong in the Lord. Amen. Issues will come. Persecution will come. Troubles will follow. But you see, Paul says something which I love so much. In the book of Romans. In the book of Romans chapter 8. Reading from the verse 39 to 39. Sorry, 38 to 39. The reason why Paul said something is because he was strong in the faith. He decided that he would go extra mile and have relationship with Christ. Therefore, he was convinced and said in Romans chapter 8 verse 38 to 99. Therefore, I am persuaded, my goodness, that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, 
the verse 39 no height nor death nor any other greater thing shall be able to separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our God why would Paul say that Paul is saying that I am so much convinced that it doesn't matter what will come my way be it death be it persecution be it anything that you can think about he was so strong that regardless of anything that will go through that he will go through God will still not leave him nor forsake him I am here to tell you this afternoon or wherever you are that 2019 decide that you will go extra mile with God decide to move from the point of just going to church and have a personal relationship with him hallelujah and they said that it doesn't matter what will come my way it doesn't matter what i will go through it doesn't matter what the persecution will come my way why could paul be convinced and say that because he had relationship with christ hallelujah therefore he said that it doesn't matter what will come my way it doesn't matter what i'll go through it doesn't matter the trouble that i'll go through it doesn't matter the persecutions 2019, it is a year that God will bless you. But you don't have a relationship with him. Hallelujah. Now let's look at what Jeremiah also said. Jeremiah chapter 9. Read it from the verse 23 to 24. My goodness. Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 to 24. Then as thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. This is Nor let the Christ rich man glory radio. in his riches. That verse 24. But let him who glories, glory in this, that he understands and knows me. My goodness. This is what God is saying. God is saying that don't glory because you have so much money in your account. Don't glory because you are wise. Don't glory because you have cars. Don't glory because everything around you is doing well. But glory in the fact that you understand and you know know me <laughs> that i am the lord exercising loving kindness judgment and righteousness in the earth for in this i delight says the lord god is said that don't glory don't glory in the fact that you are rich don't glory in the fact that you have good job don't glory in the fact that everything is okay with you but glory in the fact that you understand and you know me. Why would God say that? Because you have a job, you can easily lose it. All the things that you have around you, you can easily lose it. But the good thing is that even when you lose it, even when you are going through persecution, because you know and you understand the words of God, you will still stay right with God. Hallelujah. So Jeremiah, God spoke to the prophet Jeremiah and said, speak to my children. Speak to my children that they should not glory because they have wisdom because they are wise my god now people depend on their strength people depend on their resume people depend on the fact that they attended good skills people depend on their strength or it's the kind of family that they come from the kind of association that they are linked to but this is what god said so that do not glory do not take delight do not enjoy do not solicit do not be happy because you have this and that, Michael. But glory. But be happy. But think about the fact. But this what you should think L about. Receive what radio. should be prominent to you. What should be of most important to you. Is that you understand who I am. And you know me, my God. Because in the time of the storm. If you really know God. And you have relationship with God. It doesn't matter what you will go through. You will still be stopped. In the times of trouble. When things are not working the way it should, should go. When things around you are down. When all odds are against you. When everything around you seems to be fighting against you. You will not give up. Because you know that God. God can really do it. He said that for behold. I am the Lord. The God of all strength. That is there anything too hard for me. My God. God is said that is there anything too hard for him. Therefore, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all strength. Is there anything too hard for me? When you go for the doctor's appointment and the doctor tells you that you can't make it, what will you do? If you go to the doctor's appointment and the doctor tells you that you can't have a child, if you go for that appointment and they tell you that you have kidney failure, if you go to the appointment and the doctor tells you things that he thinks he knows, what does the word of God tell you? 
I know a scripture in Lamentations chapter 3 verse 37. Then who is he that saith? And it cometh to pass. When the Lord commanded it not. My goodness. <laughs> so now who is he that saith? Who is he? Who is that doctor? Who is that physician? He's not a human being just as I am. He is limited in his knowing. He's not God. Hallelujah. So he said, who is he that saith? And it cometh to pass when the Lord commanded it not. In other words, God has the final say, my goodness. It is only God who has the final say. Whose report will you believe? In 2019, when the doctor presents to you with what he thinks he knows. Which report shall you believe? Will you, will you believe the report of the doctor? Or you believe the report? My Who will you believe? Whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? Will you believe the report of the doctor? So Jeremiah said that don't think, don't glory in your wisdom. So that let not the mighty man glory in his might. Nor let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me. Beloved 2019. Say that for they that know their God, they shall be stronger. You shall be stronger. You shall be stronger. You will do great exploits. <laughs> Not any other exploits, but the adjective that qualifies the type of exploits that is going to be. People will not understand why that the economy is not working. People not, will not understand why things are very difficult. That you are still smiling. But therefore, there is a peace that surpasses all understanding. When God is with you, when you know the greater, the I am that I am, the greater of the universe, the one who said, that Let it be, and it was my goodness. The one who has the power to change that situation in your life, my goodness. But well, Bible says he's the unchangeable changer. <laughs> he doesn't change, but he has the power to change that situation. In that situation, he says that yes. So that for they that know their God. For they that know. For they that know their God. They shall do greatness for hallelujah. 2019 is just at the corner. Five days into 2019. But what I'm telling you, what God wants you to understand is that you have to have personal relationship with him. Enough, 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 enough. You have been going to church for far way too long. You have been going to church for far way too long. But God said that you have to graduate from that point. My goodness. You have to move from the point of just being just a church goer. Listen, being in the church is not enough. But Bible said that judgment shall begin from the church. Why would God say that? When you that there is something not there that say, Father, Father shall enter into the kingdom of God, my goodness. But they that know me, they that know me, that know me and understand me, hallelujah. Now let's look at two characters in the Bible. Who had relationship with God? Who had relationship with God? Who had that intimacy with God? Who really understood the words of God? Who had personal relationship with God? That's what I'm talking to you about it. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis chapter 26. And read from the verse 1. But there was famine in the land. I'm talking about Isaac. There is this man called Isaac. There was a famine in the land. Beside the first famine. That was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abibala. King of the Philistines. In Gera. The verse 2. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you, my goodness. Jesus, my God. <laughs> Bible said that, and God appeared to Isaac. The question is, why would God appear to Isaac? If he doesn't have a relationship with him. The reason why God was able to appear to Isaac because there was a relationship with him. There was that personal encounter. God knew Isaac, and Isaac knew him. And he was able to speak to him on personal relationship, on personal basis. And he said, dwell in the land and I will be with you. And bless you. For to you and your descendant, 
I will give all this land and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. God had a covenant with Abraham and he said, I will bless you. I will bless you and I will bless your descendants. Out of you shall be a blessing, my goodness. Out of you shall be a blessing. Read the book of Genesis chapter 15. He said the Bible said, and Abraham believed <laughs> that out of you many nations shall be blessed. He was making reference to Jesus Christ. He said that your seed, your seed, your seed that he was talking about was Jesus Christ. We read the book of Galatians chapter 3. Bible said that for the seed, for the seed, for the seed, for the seed of Abraham was Jesus Christ. So that out of you be Jesus Christ, there shall be a blessing. And the blessing is that many, many people shall come unto me. Many people will give their life to Christ. Out of your seed with Jesus Christ is not Isaac. The seed of Abraham is not Isaac. The seed of Abraham is Jesus Christ. And he said that out of your seed shall be a blessing. And out of you, the blessing shall spread unto many nations. And the Bible said that and Abraham believed God and was counted unto him as righteousness. So because Isaac was the son of Abraham, he said that I said, Isaac, there is famine in this land, in Egypt. Do not go anywhere. It is God Himself who appeared to him. Oh Jesus. So that and God Himself appeared unto him. Why would God appear unto him? 2019. May God have an encounter with you. He said and he appeared to him. And he said, Do not go. Do not leave. Stay. Stay. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Listen, how many of us? <laughs> God go speak to him. He said, I don't want you to go there. I don't want you to make a move. Stay there with your family. Don't move an inch. He had a personal relationship with him. And he said that, dwell in this land and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants, I give all this land, not some, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto your father now let's look at the verse 12 and 14 of this same because Isaac but Isaac knew God because there was a personal relationship between Isaac and God look at what it said the verse 12 then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped the same year in 2019 you will reap in 2019 whatever your hands will touch shall be a blessing Beloved, listen to me. I am speaking to you as a servant of God this afternoon. That 2019 shall not be a failure year for you. Everything that your hand will touch, everything that you will start, you shall come to a completion. Bible said that, and say it unto Zerubbabel, that whatever your hand will start will come to a completion. The Bible told Isaac and said, so in that land. And you shall reap. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Let's ask ourselves this question. He was in the same land that people were struggling, that things were not working. The Bible said that there was famine, famine, talking about famine in that land. Every agriculture wasn't yielding to anything. The animals were dying. The crops were dying. You can't even tell the land. It is so dry. There was no rain. Everything wasn't working in terms of agriculture. But Bible says that to visit he told us Isaac that do not go. Because Isaac wanted to live. But he said, no, don't go, don't go, don't go. I want you to stay here, live in this land. And Bible said that when people were trying to engage in agriculture, when people were trying to sow their seeds and it wasn't working. Also that in that same year on that same land. And Isaac, because he had a relationship with God, my goodness. Isaac sowed and he reaped. And he reaped hundredfold, not thirtyfold, not forty, not fifty, not sixty. Bible said that he reaped hundred, which means that it was hundred percent. There wasn't anything like pest eating the crops. There wasn't anything like rodents destroying them. 
everything that Isaac sold. The Bible says that he ripped and represent. Why? Because he knew God. I prophesy into your life that in 2019, whatever your hand, my goodness, whatever your hand will touch, 2019 will not be a failure. You have depended on your strength for far too long. You have thought that you could make it for far too long. It hadn't yielded anything. But I'm telling you that 2019, if only you would depend on God. In 2019, if only you will rest on God. In 2019, if you will not lean on your own understanding, my goodness. But you will depend on him in 2019. He will not forsake you. Therefore, they that know their God, they shall be strong. This and is great for C. Bible says that Isaac, Isaac, Isaac. Isaac. Isaac knew God. Isaac had an encounter with God. And therefore, in terms of difficulty, in terms of where people were engaged in agriculture, and he wasn't yielded. In terms of famine, because Isaac knew God, the Bible said that, yes, tell my goodness. <laughs> I don't care what 2019 economy will be, but if only you would know God, Jesus Christ. The Bible said that God bless him. Look at the verse 14. For, the, so for he had Possessions. Let me go back to the 13 to complete the scripture. The man began to prosper and continue prospering. Listen, 2019, you will prosper and you will continue to the end. Listen, January, you will do well. February, you will do well. March, April, May, June, you will do well. And the prosperity will not be for a short season. You will continue to the end of the year. Hallelujah. And you will give glory to God. And he said, For he had possessions of luck. And possession of herbs and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. <laughs> Listen, when God blesses you, people will envy you. Jesus. Yeah, because Isaac was blessed. Because the blessing of Isaac was too much. Nobody could understand this. Listen, in 2019, as I told you, I don't care what the doctor will tell you. People will run to you after the doctor had told you that you can't have a child. When all medical knowledge had proved to you that you can't have a child, God will stop him because you know him. Listen, you will have a child. And the barren, oh my goodness, and the womb that is expecting a child, yes, 2019, you will Christ have a child. We are. Instead of every Philistine in the land, kingdom. they did not understand. They asked him, what you see, what method did you use? People will come to you in 2019 and ask you. I mean, how, 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 how? They will ask you that, I mean, I mean, you have to explain to this. And you will tell them that this, my God, is too much. They will run to you and ask you, how were you able to make it? People who apply for that job, they think their qualification will get them that job. And they won't get it. And because you know God, God will go before you. The scripture that I read to you. God will go before you in Isaiah 43. Say that God will go before you. People will come to you and ask you, why were you able to make it? And you will tell them, it's because I serve Jehovah God. The I am that I am God. The one who knows the end from the beginning. And people will marvel and ask you, what should we do? And because of your testimony, it will draw people to God. The Bible says that the Philistines, they envied him. People will envy you because of what God will do for you. I am prophesying into your life. That 2019 will be a blessing. A year of prosperity. A year that God will see you through. And you will give glory to God. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 9. Verse 23. And then verse 24 is what I love. So that when people come to you. Glory in the fact. That you understand me. And you know me. Let's this look at is L for C. Radio. Another person. Another character in the Bible. Job. I'm reading Job chapter 42. Read it from the verse 1 and 2. Look at what Job went through. But still, Job did not give up. Job went through calamities upon calamities. He lost all his children. Everything that Job had were lost. It's just like one after the other. Beloved, if maybe you were in the shoes of Job, you would have killed yourself. It's like it wasn't like a year. Then the following year, something will happen. It wasn't like two years. Then another year it will happen. It was back to back. It's like the enemy attacked him <coughs> so strong that he didn't know what to do. 
Even to the point that he was so much discouraged. But the Bible says that he encouraged himself in the law. Even to the point that his wife came to him and said, Why don't you curse this God and be free? Why? Why are you so much confident that this God will see you through? If he will, he wouldn't have done this to you. And the Bible says that he rebuked his wife. And look at what I'm reading in the chapter 42, the verse 1 and 2. Then Job answered the Lord and said, this is Job, after everything that he had gone through, he was confident. Why? Because he knew God, my God. Because he had relationship with God. That despite everything that he is going through, despite the this storms, despite the trouble, Christ God will not forsake him. He said, I know that you can do everything. He said, I know. <laughs> there is a knowing here. <laughs> he said, I know, I know, I know that you can do everything. And that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. Listen, listen. Whatever God has said concerning your life shall surely come to pass. Whatever God has said. He said, I, I, Bible said I, he knew you when you were in your mother's womb. He said, I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. Listen, no purpose of God concerning your life can be withheld by the enemy. This Listen. is Live for Christ no purpose. Radio. No purpose. And look at the verse 12 and 13 of the same chapter. Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, and 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. And look at the 13. He also had seven sons and three daughters. But was that for the latter part, the, the latter days of Job was more than the beginning. Why? The question is why? The question then again is why? Why was Job so confident? Even to the extent that when his wife came to him and said, that why don't you curse this God? He said, no, I will not curse him. Why? Because there was that relationship with him. I am telling you that 2019, what will cause you to do great exploit? As we read in Daniel chapter 11, verses 32b, that for they that know their God, they shall be strong. Just as Job was strong, just as it doesn't matter what came his way, he stood for God and said, I will not forsake this God. And Bible said that his latter days was more than the beginning. Beloved, I am here to prepare you. We are preparing ourselves. We are equipping ourselves. Into 2019. 2019. God will bless you. Decide to have a relationship with him. Decide to have that intimacy. Now my last. I'm, 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 I'm completing what I'm talking about. This afternoon. How then. Can you have that intimacy. Because it is very important. Because the key word here. It's this knowing is God. Christ the key word we here is having a personal the relationship with God. God. The key word here is be at a point that God can easily speak to you. Hallelujah. And the first step is giving your life to Christ. Maybe you are hearing me wherever you are. You don't even understand what I'm talking about. It's like what is God's servant Eric talking about this afternoon? It's like you don't understand the genesis of what I'm talking about. It's very simple. The first step, the first step, the first step of having intimacy with God is giving your life to Christ. Read the book of John chapter 14, verse 6. He said, Jesus Christ said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can get to the Father except by me. Hallelujah. The first step is giving your life to Christ. You want to give your life to Christ. You see, that is the first step. So therefore, behold, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. If only you will open. So that God said that he will come in and he'll come and dine with you. Behold, I stand at the door. God is standing at the door of your heart and he is knocking. The reason why I came here this time, this time, is to present to you Christ. We are in the Christmas season. That is the reason why Christ came down. And it was God who manifested himself in the flesh according to 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. Bible said that he manifested himself in the flesh and we all saw him. Bible said that he, for God was in Christ reconciling ourselves to himself. You have to know God. 
that after you've given your life to Christ, there is also another step. You don't sit down. You have to read the word of God. Hallelujah. For he says that you should glory in the fact that you understand me and you know me. So having intimacy with God is reading the word of God. Hallelujah. The Bible said that for in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. My goodness. So reading the word of God will help you this understand God. Radio. Everything that you need is in the word of God. So you have to decide that 2019, I will have my personal quiet time. Decide that 2019, I will read the word of God. Decide that 2019, you will decide that you will by set and now you will descend to the word of God. I love this so much. The Apostle Paul told his son Timothy in ministry, Therefore, steady the word to show yourself approved unto God. A workman needed not to be ashamed, dividing the word of truth. My goodness, there's a difference between just reading the word of God and studying the word of God. Bible makes understand in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Now, for this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, that shall meditate, that shall meditate, that shall meditate on it day and night. <laughs> If you read the word of God, you have to meditate. You have to sit down and apply the word of God to yourself. And allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Why? Because the Bible, the Bible is a message. And the message is about Jesus Christ. The Bible is the Holy Spirit. For Bible said that the Holy Spirit inspired men. And they wrote the word, the Live word of God. For Christ so as you read the word of God, CAB, you are CAB having a personal relationship with the Holy this Spirit. Is L for C- as you are going into the word of God, you are learning and you are studying the word and you are coming to a point of intimacy with God that's what he said 2019 decide 2019 decide that you will know God decide that 2019 you have an intimacy with God decide that 2019 you have a spiritual understanding with God decide that 2019 it will not just be about going to church it will be about knowing God hallelujah and the last thing is prayer the way of communicating to God is through prayer. Is that that 2019 will be more prayerful than ever. If 2018, you want to make amends. You want to say 2019, you will spend time in his presence praying. You will pray in the morning. You will pray in the afternoon. You will pray in the evening. You will spend time in your closet and communicate with your father. That is the means of communication. 2019, you will do that. Beloved, Think about this. You have to first give your this life to Christ. This is live for Christ, Christ radio. Lord, best we lasting. are the vessel. You have to study the word. God's kingdom. You have to be prayerful. I am bringing my message to an end. That is why I came here. If you don't know Jesus Christ, as your Lord and personal Savior, you want to give your life to Christ. Remember the first step that I spoke to you about. It's about giving your life to Christ. Maybe you are hearing my voice. You don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. If today, if right now, if I'm even as I'm speaking to you, if you should die, you know definitely that you don't know God. You know definitely that you will go to hell. You know it yourself. God is giving you a chance. That is why I came all the way to come and speak to you. That is why I came that you give your life to Christ. You see, God loves you. That is why you are not dead. God loves you. That is why you are still alive. There is a plan for you. God has a plan for you. If you are hearing my voice, you want to give your life to Christ. You want to say, I surrender my life unto you. You want to say, I give my life unto you. You want to say, I come to you. You want to say, I come to you. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. So that in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. They shall be punished with everlasting destruction for the presence of God and the glory of His power. If you are here and you don't know Jesus, if you are here and you don't know Jesus, if you haven't accepted Him as your Lord and personal Savior, that is the most important possession. You want to surrender your life to God. 
You want to say, I give my life to you. For Christ, you want to say, Oh Lord, come and live in my life. Take absolute control. Lead me. I've depended on my own strength for far too long. I have been into the camp of the enemy for far too long. Tonight or this afternoon, wherever you are. You want to say, I surrender my life. You want to give your life to him. You want to surrender everything unto him. He's standing at the door. He's knocking. If only you will open. If only you will open, he will come in. It's not too long. It is not time wasted. You haven't wasted your time for far too long. Now, if only, the condition is if only. If only, if only. The condition is if only, if only you will say that enough is enough. If only you will say that I've depended on my own strength for far too long. If only you will invite him into your life. He's ready. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what you did yesterday. It doesn't matter what you did the day before. It doesn't matter what you did in the month of November. It doesn't matter what you did any month at all in the month of December. Uh, 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 in the year 2018. If only you will come to him. If only you will say that I've come. If only you will say that enough is enough. If only you will say that it is time. He is standing at the door. Look, you want to say this prayer after me. Think about this very well. Say salvation is about you. It's not about couple basis. It's not about family basis. Even twins, they are different. And they will be judged separately. God will judge you separately. God will judge you separately. You want to give your life to Christ. You don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. If you know, then you can postpone it. Since you don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. Since you don't know, don't know what is going to happen in the next hour. If you don't know what is going to happen in the next minute, don't talk about seconds. People live home and they say bye bye to their family, not knowing that will be the end. People go to the hospital, people sleep and they don't wake up. It does happen. I know of somebody who just went to bed and could not wake up again. It can happen to anybody. But what will give you that assurance? What will give you that hope that even if you should die today, you have Christ? Even if you should die today, you have given your life to Christ. That is the main reason why I came to the studio to talk to you. God loves you. And remember, if only you were the person, if you were the only person on this earth because of love, you will still die for you. You want to say this prayer after me. You want to close your eyes wherever you are. You want to say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. I have sinned against you. I've wronged at you. I've involved in my own ways for far too long. Therefore, I surrender my life to Christ. I surrender my life to you. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me of my sins. Wash me with the blood. Come and live within me. Change me. Restore me. Forgive me of my sins. Beloved, if you have said this, from today, I no longer have any communion with the devil. Today, I'm giving you permission. Come and live within me. Come and live within me. Come and live within me. So that from today, I surrender my ways. Lead me. Guide me. Be control of my life. Satan, I don't have any relationship with you. I denounce you today, being the 26th of December 2018. I'm giving your life to Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, if you have done this, just believe. It's a spiritual encounter. God has forgiven you of your sin. Jesus Christ now lives in you. Colossians chapter 1. So that reading from the verse 4. It says that giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the sin in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his son. In whom we have redemption through his blood. And forgiveness of sin. If you have prayed this prayer after me, know that your sins have been forgiven and you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness and you have been conveyed into the kingdom of the Son. Now the Holy Spirit lives in you. Live for now the Holy Spirit lives in you. The Holy Spirit now lives in you. What amazing. I can tell you for sure. That the angels in heaven are very happy. 
you are rejoicing because you have given your life to Christ. The Bible says that when a sinner gives his life to Christ, the host of angels in heaven, they rejoice. The angels are rejoicing. Now there has been a spiritual change. You know, like just believe that. Now the Holy Spirit now lives in you as a mark of redemption. You are now a child of God. Just know that. I'm telling you that today, you are a child of God. Today, you have given your life to Christ. So today, you are a different person. God loves you. And the reason why I came. 2019 is a year of victory. God bless you. Just find yourself a Bible-believing church. You have given your life to Christ. You have to grow. Find yourself a Bible-believing church. Where the word of God is taught. Now we have so many doctrines all over the place. You want to find yourself a Bible believing church where the gospel is teach, where you are being taught because you have to go. Bible said that as newborn babies, you have to desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. They have to come to the point of growing. This is the have to come to a point of growing. We are so only to find yourself a Bible believing church. And like what I'm gonna say, I have just five minutes in the studio. Maybe you want to call in. You want to encourage us. You want to say something to us in 2018. Maybe God has been so good to you. You can call the studio line. The studio line is 571. 577. 4471. I am repeating it again. The studio line is 571. 577. 4471. Maybe you have been blessed by the message this afternoon. Maybe God has spoken to you. Maybe you have given your life to Christ. And you want to talk to me. You want to let the whole world know about this. You want to let the whole world know that you are now a born again Christian. You can give us a call. Maybe you want to call it and just encourage us. The studio line this is 571. For Christ, right? 577. 4471. Then once I leave the studio, you can also call me. My line is 571. 3651 1251 571 365 1251 That is my personal number. You can call me. If you are outside the United States, you can add code, which is 001. So 001-571-365-1251. You can call it outside the United States. If you are in the United States, you can call me. My number is 571. 365-1251 and the studio number again I have just 5 minutes to leave the studio that is 571-577-4471 you can give us a call this is you can F encourage us. Radio. you can tell us what the Lord has done for you in 2018 I just have 2 minutes I just have 2 minutes Beloved, God loves you so much. That is why I came here this afternoon. Just know that you've given your life to Christ. And just know that 2019 is a year This of is live Once again, I want Christ you to know that radio. this is God's servant, Eric Corbin, and you are here with me live on L4C Radio, and also L4C Radio, and also live on Facebook and YouTube. I come to you every Wednesday, 3 p.m., with wet and spirit. Tune in next week around this same time, 3 p.m., and your life will never be the same. God bless you and have a wonderful day. <laughs> this is L for C Radio. <laughs> Radio. 
Multimedia, a generation standing up for Jesus Christ. <laughs> 